Hey, what's up guys, Shabam here, and this is a 1996 R33 Nissan Skyline. This is in fact, my Nissan Skyline. This particular car is a GTS 25T, one model below the famed GTR, also known as Godzilla. This car has a RB25 DET, which is a single turbo, straight six, two and a half liter engine. The engine is mated to a six speed manual gearbox with all the power delivered to the rear wheels. As a lot of enthusiasts say, this is a driver's car with the only driver aids being power steering and ABS braking. Well, that is a relatively clean and stock example of this car. I have made some modifications to the car itself. We have a 3 inch stainless steel cat pack exhaust with a variable muffler. We have a GTR wing on the back. We have an increased boost to 11 psi using an R32 wastegate actuator. We also have bigger rims as you can see, they're 19 inch rims with wide-ish tires. And we have a full Alpine sound system with Pioneer speakers and the combined speakers in the front. So these modifications are all the minor to make the car a much nicer car. The biggest market for these cars has to be the cheap sports car market. In a country such as Australia, these cars are everywhere you look, and not for no reason. The 2.5 liter engine produced 184 kilowatts and 294 newton meters of torque when near. Now, by today's standards, that's not very high for a sports car. But don't be fooled, this car is definitely not slow. The 0 to 100 km per hour times that people have achieved in the past is around the 6 second mark. The Skylines have always been touring cars in Nissan's lineup. This means they follow up electronics such as climate control, ABS, automatic mirrors, and airbags. Pretty advanced for 1996. In the stock form, they're not the best track car. The suspension is soft and the steering is light. But being a manual rear-wheel drive car, they're not bad. Where these cars shine are in the hills like this. The car absorbs bumps really well, giving you more confidence to push it just a little bit harder. The steering is precise and accurate, although a bit too light. But it's a touring car, so that's what I guess that's what it's designed for. The stock brakes on this car are excellent. The aluminium calipers and steel rotors have a decently large surface area to avoid fade when pushing the car around a bit. But on a track, brake fade will eventually occur. Unfortunately, we don't have access to a track, so we can't really see what it's like on the ragged edge. And as responsible citizens, we're not going to attempt that on a public road, and neither should you. Here we go! The R33s are big cars, they're the biggest and heaviest in the Skyline range, but big does not necessarily mean bad. They're, if you want it for a track monster, of course you'll end up removing most of the interior, but as a Grand Tourer, there's comfortable seats and decent amount of space for two people and their luggage. The seats are large and soft with sufficient bowstring to make sure you feel snug while not uncomfortable. The seating position is excellent with all controls easy to access and surprisingly good visibility around the car. Like I mentioned before, this car has a light steering which means it's great for a long drive. The gearing is such that in 4th and 5th gear, you can pretty much get to any speed you want. You basically get up to 4th gear, chuck it into 5th and just cruise. The car is perfect for a long drive as what is intended by Nissan designers back in the day. about the gearbox, it has a nice notchy shifter with a comfortable grip that comes standard from Nissan. Although I would have liked the throw to be a little bit shorter, it's not bad. The worst thing about the gearbox is the clutch. The clutch on this car is so heavy, you are guaranteed to get a cramp when you go for a long drive. I don't know why it's so heavy. People say it's a heavy duty clutch, but I've driven cars with other heavy duty clutches that are nowhere near as painful as this is to drive. 
maybe it's just my car, maybe it's all Skylines, I guess I have to drive more Skylines to find out, but definitely clutch is one thing I would change in this car. The back seats in most coupes are cramped and this is no exception, although being a large car as it is, it's definitely usable. Would I want to be in the back seats for extended periods of time? Probably not, but for the occasional use, they're not bad. Note that a drink bottle is considered a large item in this car. There's only one cup holder, which means that the driver has to hold their drink or the passenger holds their drink. And of course we know who's going to hold the drink, it's the passenger every time. A lot of people might say, hey at least there's one cup holder, well forget putting anything in it because as soon as you go to change gears, it's just going to get knocked out by your elbow. Fuel consumption is the next thing which makes this car impractical for daily use. I drive it on a mixture of highways and city streets and get 15 litres per 100 kilometres. That's 15 miles to the gallon for our empirical friends. This means you end up spending a lot of money on fuel. Other times when the car bites you in the ass, it would maintain its cost and the biggest one, insurance. So should you buy one of these cars? Absolutely. They give you an experience like no other car. There's a reason why all these 1990s Jap cars are so well uh, made and so desired by so many. I've driven this car for the last three years. Although well, they may be impractical, expensive to maintain, a cop magnet, it is a fantastic experience that cannot be beaten. There is a reason why these cars are so successful back in the day and why they continue to be so successful now. As time goes on, these cars get rarer and rarer, which means that less, of this, uh, less and less of these are seen on the streets. So if you ever have a chance, make sure you get into one car in person and give it a go. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. Like always, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more videos coming out soon. If you want to see us do any more car videos, just let us know and let us know what kind of car you want and we'll try our best to get it done. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.